we need to understand the social structure, social and technical structure, not just social, but both together, and how they they communicate with each other. And a, a good example of this is this, this university. So let's see if we have the same understanding of what is the system. So social technical system. What do you see it? What is the social technical system? Is your computer a social technical system? Is Wikipedia a social technical system? Why? What's the difference? The way I see it, a system is an aggregation of things that put it together to enable us to do something. Look at this university. This university is a system, it's an organization. A system provides a rule on how to behave inside of the university. Provides technology, these rooms, this chair, that enables us to sit in the classroom and to learn as a collective. It depends on how you see it. If you see it from a larger perspective, then you see a system as everything that involves us in able to do something. If you see it from a small perspective, then you see Wikipedia. But Wikipedia can be used inside of this classroom. So it's part of also this classroom system. That's why it's so hard to, to kind of uh, have this understanding. So it's, a, it's kind of um, an aggregation of something of human organizational components, network, and everything together. So it can be part of a large society, the learning society, the education society. It's also a system. So my question is, everything is a system? <laughs> How uh, everything is interconnected. So we are talking about the environment, the society, the people, the products that we use, or the technologies that we use, and they satisfy our needs. So we can see it like that. Why not? So let's, let's look at the library system. It has the hardware, the software. It has the information search engines that can be inside of the computer, of course, but that can be a person telling Go to this shelf and you'll see this book because I, I did the catalogation of the, the book. It has its users, operators, you, the librarian. It has the, the people that manage, update, and do everything. So a system can be an aggregation of people, can be an aggregation of informational sources, can be an aggregation of mechanical. Uh, uh, tech, tech, uh, technology, it can be a community. So everything together is a system. You can look at the system from different perspectives. If you focus on the informational part, then you will fo focus on the database, the data, and to create from data knowledge and how this data is provided to people. How do we inform people about this knowledge? If you focus on the mechanical part, then you focus on robotics and how robots will interact with you. But you focus on the mechanical, the electrical, the art. If you focus on the people, you focus on user interface, how we design the user interface. If we focus on the community, we focus on how to use the information, the mechanical and the people together and gain knowledge, basically crowdsourcing uh, uh, method. We use the people to provide knowledge, but we can look at systems from two perspectives. Isolated systems, so like words, the purpose of the word is to, uh, to make us, to facilitate, uh, to write. Then we have the complex system, so uh, they are part of a social organization. They have collaborative or authorship. Uh, they they allow you to work in teams. Wikipedia is one of them. Wikipedia not just allows you to many people to change text, but has this policeman of control people that verify if your text is reliable and credible or not. A more complex system. It changes its dynamics. And it depends much on the organizational and the structure that has. Another example of this change is, so when we design, 
a coffee machine, we need to be aware of the surrounding of the coffee machine. What is the purpose and the role to use the coffee machine? Is to be used inside of the home or inside of the organization? And if so, how does it work? How the things, how does support? Either you see a system for a pure technical perspective, and then you see you have this isolated approach, how this can we enable me to write, or we look at from a social technical perspective, and we don't see it more as the tool that right or not, or that is good to pick up, or it's easy to use, but we see it as what enables me to do. Does it enable me to show you, to write text to others, that enables me to work in our organization together with this board? So if you see it from a pure technical perspective, and the idea is to minimize the error. If we see it from a social view, then it's a judgment, it's an expectation, it is a knowledge, it's like an experience. So pure social technical systems are uh, isolated systems. The social technical view focuses on facilitating interaction. From a social technical perspective, we focus on the user, we focus on the psychology behavior and we try to understand the mind. So so a social technical system includes a little bit of everything, software, hardware, business, inter interrelations, rules, regulations, humans. The, it depends where you, your perspective is and how you want to. So if you see it from a layer point of view, you have the lower layer, it's the mechanical part where you study computing and mathematics. So you learn how to program and allow how to also mechanics to learn how to do the hardware. Then you you see it from an informational level and you start how to create information and how to transform data into knowledge, how to, to develop software. If you see it from a, a personal level, then you will go to human computer interaction. If you see it from a more community level, then design is not simply linking social and technical things. It's more that it's like I said, it's a very complex thing. Uh, so it's very hard. If it is so complex, it's very hard for no for us to identify what is a good and what is a bad design. And it's very hard for us designers to say, I design this app like this because I have this intention in mind. I have this person in mind. These are the users that I'm going to do, and this is the values that I want to. It's also very hard to observe how we measure playfulness. So the centric part is that I, I want you to look, is to focus on the experience, focus on what users need, focus on the usefulness as well, the efficiency, and identify if they are satisfied with it. This is what has what uh, we are trying to do. There are a couple of uh, books, but basically it provided these books. So this could be a guide. I ask you to read this book, some chapters of this book. And uh, he has his own perceptions of what is a good design principle. Some people follow them. And this relates with this visibility. Is it easy to see its function with feedback? What is it doing now? So you need to provide feedback. Affordance, how do you I use it? Mapping, where am I and where can I go? Constraints, why can't I do that? Or consistency, I have seen this before. So visibility, these are principles that are in nowadays technologies. The more visible functions are, the more likely users want to this next so increases adoption if you understand how it works go there and use it so things get with problems when we don't understand how to use it so it should be obvious on how to do it. so sometimes your tool your pro 
product that you are designing is so complex that it's very hard for you to provide the features and the tasks in a, in a visible manner. So you need to learn how to hide the complexity on how to uh, make it easy. So you need to understand what is the task, what are the priorities, what we do first intuitively in when and then it comes the second actions, primary actions, secondary actions. Feedback is also very important, like this example of you writing in Word and imagine that the letters that you write don't appear right away. It's very confusing for you. You don't know if you are doing a mistake or if it is a problem of the computer that is lagging. You need feedback for the actions. You need feedback for the status. You can provide feedback in different manners, vibration, like the, the cross, having these sounds. So you understand that it's green, you understand that it is red, you have the tactical feedback, you have the animation. So you have different ways of providing feedback. So again, there is predefined patterns. Um, use the, those predefined patterns to provide feedback. You need to understand and give tools on how it works. A good example is the link. How, if you don't have this feedback, the underlying the, and, and the blue thing, how do you know it, if it is a link? Design things that minimize the number of errors. So in terms of uh, constraints, you can have physical, semantic, and cultural constraints. The same happens with metaphor much, much easier when, when we use metaphors that we are used to do every day. The, like this um, mm. graphical interface. The metaphor of a desktop enables us to understand how to work with the with operating system, how the operating system works. If we change too much, because we are used to have the, our desk, we are used we have our garbage uh, or the trash can. We are used to have our, have our folders and so on. So understand how to use the design pattern, understand how to use the materials, design that exists 